Hey, what's up? This is Matt Byrne from Hatebreed, and you're watching RichardThinks.org. Hey everybody, this is Richard, RichardThinks.org. Today we are at Empire in Springfield, Virginia for the Divinity of Purpose Tour featuring Hatebreed, Shadows Fall, Dying Fetus, and the Contortionist. And I have with me Matt of Hatebreed with me here today. How are you doing today, man? I'm feeling good today. Very good. Good to be in Springfield. Yeah, you got like, well, counting today, four days left on the tour. How's the tour been so far, the first tour of 2003 been for you? Oh, it's been great. Uh, it's the first U.S. tour for us, uh, 2013. And uh, first tour for the new some album? of the first tour for the new album. Yep, we were in o we were over in Europe um, right before this, so we did two weeks there on the Persistence tour. Flew home. We had like four days off, and we went right into this. It's been great. We're getting back into the, some of the the smaller clubs that we haven't played in a couple years. Some of the cities we haven't been through in a couple years. Uh, it's good to be in the intimate setting again. Mm -hmm. You know, the smaller club atmosphere, up close and personal with the fans. Some clubs have uh, barricades. Some don't. Yeah, this one um, does. This one just has the barricade, but like, n but it's just nothing separating from the fans. So yeah, that's good. No, they're just at least close bam. to the stage. I mean, it's cool to play the big festival uh, atmosphere. You know, big festivals, especially over in Europe. But uh, you know, sometimes the barricade is like thirty feet from the stage, so you kind of lose that intimate contact with mm -hmm. the fans. So uh, yeah, it's good to be back in small clubs. It's a good way to uh, start off touring for the new album with our friend Shadows Fall, Dying Fetus, and a newer band called The Contortionist. Um, yeah, it's been great so far. All right, so let's warm up a little bit with some this or that. So, sure. vinyl or MP3? Uh, I love vinyl. I love the warmth of vinyl, but I think out of pure laziness, it's just <laughs> MP MP3 for me anymore. Right on. <laughs> uh, touring internationally or touring in the States? A uh, little bit of both. Um, I mean, we go back and forth between Europe and, and the U.S. And, and Australia so much. We're heading back down to South America. We were over in Southeast Asia. I love to travel. It's good to be on the road, you know, but I think, like, uh, you know, being in the U.S., where you know what to expect and, and you know you're just comfortable that's what you're used to and you don't have to switch um, cell phone providers yeah you don't <laughs> have to switch sim cards and all this crazy stuff but i do love the festival setting of uh traveling throughout europe in the summertime especially uh so i don't know it's hard to pick one mm -hmm. all right so we're now on the topic of festivals so festivals or headline shows i like the festivals i love the headline shows but i love the festivals because uh you especially in europe i mean you're you're grouped on one show on one stage with all these bands that you would never play together with mm -hmm. typically you know in on one show or in one setting like we've done uh we did a festival in sweden once where it was us mary j blige oh, really? blonde redhead the lemon heads like all this mix of really? music and i think that's really that's cool awesome. the I mean, diversity's yeah. there yeah and the fans really appreciate it so um yeah, I mean, I like the festival setting for that. You're playing to thousands and thousands of people. It's big, it's open air, it's like fun in the sun, you know, heavy metal summer camp at the festival. And then you just like see like all the, you know, pits. Yeah, going seasoned everywhere. people. And uh, like I said, it's it being lumped on a show with all these different bands and all the variety of music is pretty cool. All right. Well, so now that we're the su subject of mosh pits, mosh pits or crowd surfers? Uh, well, we get a lot of both. I don't think I could pick one on that. As long as they're doing both, you know, the crowd's really into it. There's a lot of action, yeah. you know, at the show. So I like them both. All right. Uh, iPhone or Android? iPhone. I had Android. I switched to iPhone. I just switched I, last week, and I was like, man, I cannot believe why I started with Android. Yeah, I, I gave it a run. I know a couple people who have switched back from iPhone to Android. Whatever. Personal preference. I... I like the battery I like life on the, the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I I had like three batteries. I would carry it around with me because my phone would die so fast, and I kept I kept having like the app killer. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Still exactly the app killer thing. I like the iPhone because you could get the backup battery pack, and uh, I'm sure you could do the same with Android. I don't know the functionality of it. I like the iPhone. Right on. All right. So the Divinity of Purpose has been out for two weeks now. It debuted at number twenty on the Billboard Top 200. How's the you know how's the initial reception been like compared to your previous releases? Um, well, as far as numbers go, I think we're right on par with kind of what we've always done as far as charting goes. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular release, we even did a little better. Mm -hmm. and we sold a little over 17,000 records the first week, number 20 on the top 200. We were number one on the hard chart, number one on iTunes. Um, so it's good to know that you're beating the numbers that you did, that you had previously. Mm -hmm. You're moving forward, progressing. Um, all the reviews of the record have been great. I can't really say I've read too many bad reviews. Um, you know, it, everything's been favorable. The fans are really digging the music. Um, 
and they're reacting live. We're playing three new songs live now, and they're reacting. They're already singing the lyrics and, and latching onto the song. So, um, yeah, the response overall has been great. So you guys went with, well, you signed with Razor and Tie to release this album. So how, how did you guys go in picking Razor and Tie to release this new album? Uh, well, it just made the most sense. There was a lot of excitement and a lot of energy from that team. Um, one of the guys uh, that we worked with at E1, our previous label, uh, began working for Razor and Tie. So we had a good working relationship with him before. Mm -hmm. So it just made sense on that end, you know, when we were sorting through labels and stuff and offers like he he was gunning for us and we loved working with him so it kind of made the most sense at mm -hmm. the end of the day and then uh so that's who we're with in the u.s and then overseas we're now on nuclear blast records uh which it was the same type of thing the energy behind the team you know they they mm -hmm. kind of know how to handle us they're fans of the band they love the music they know how to market us and and get us out there and and push us to the next level so on you know you guys are off, you said you were playing three new songs live is there a song in particular that you're looking forward to play live to add to the set that hasn't been added yet uh yeah probably the language mm -hmm. which is track four off the record uh we haven't played that live we haven't really rehearsed it yet either uh it just reminds me a lot of slayer they're my favorite band mm -hmm. real fast thrashy song uh so i'm looking forward to that we're playing indivisible now which is a song that i really like tracking it's one of my standout favorites on the record um so probably those two are my top songs on the new album so when you guys like are rehearsing, how I know that spontaneously sometimes because I saw from the stage, I took a picture at the Fillmore show that you guys were at, mm -hmm. and I saw you guys had like three distinct. Like, it was all on one sheet of paper, but it looked like it was three different sets. And I've seen like online that you know basically Jamie just shouts out, and you guys just have to like, you know, just yeah, yeah just jump in into that one. So like, do you guys just you know at, at rehearsal do you just have like a standard sheet and say okay here's what we're gonna practice and then. You know, and then there's the additional songs. Is that how it goes? Yeah, sort of. I mean, we don't really rehearse anyway because we're on the road uh, a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So when we do rehearse, we just run through. Uh, we just start calling out songs and, <laughs> and rehearse them, and that's it. And live, it's the same type of thing. Uh, we have like a master list. So mm -hmm. that's probably the list that you saw. It's kind of a master list of all the songs that we play or ones we chose at the time off of each record. So there's we play a good amount of material off of every release that we've done. And uh, yeah, there's just a master list and Jamie will call them out as we go. Some nights we play these songs, some nights we play these songs. It's cool to have that variety for the fans that come to multiple shows. They can see multiple sets, different sets. Um, it's just something we've always done. We don't use a set list, uh, not unless we're on a support tour or something where we're under time constraints and we really have to time out the set. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, our headlining shows are just, you know, just go for it. Yeah. Start calling out tunes and start playing Just them. Just jamming until, That's it. until venue security is like, all right, you got to wrap it up. Yeah. I guess it's reminiscent of the Ramones, you know, mm. four count and go. That's it. One, two, three, four. Boom. Just do them all. All right. So for the first for the first time since Perseverance, you guys had uh, Josh Wilbur come in with you along with your usual producer, Zeus. How did, he, how did you guys go in? Well, how did that relationship start? Uh, well... Zeus has been a part of the family since Perseverance. He's worked on every yeah. record in some way, sh shape, or form since Perseverance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he's just, he knows us. <coughs> he knows working with us. Uh, he knows how to get the tones we want. Um, we just have the vibe in the studio, mm -hmm. you know, that working works, relationship. You know? If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Right, right. But at the same time, you know, as a band, you want to try new things. Uh, dare I use the word experiment, you know, <laughs> that get, that becomes an ugly word sometimes, but mm -hmm. um, you want to change things up. That's what keeps you fresh. That's what keeps you relevant. Mm -hmm. It keeps things progressing, trying new ideas. So uh, we toyed with the idea of bringing in another producer uh, and we came on Josh Wilbur. Mm -hmm. He was into the idea of working with us and we're a fan of all his stuff. He's done uh, Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. He's done Avenged Sevenfold, mm -hmm. countless things he's been involved with. Um, so it was cool working with him. He did a lot of the vocal production. That was basically his main thing. But he messed with the music a little bit, uh, especially the drums. He did some. He, he kind of gave a fresh sound on the drums, brought them out to the front. And he's a drummer himself, so he kind of knew how to add little nuances and stuff to the tags at the end of parts and stuff to really make them stand out. So, uh, you know, it's hate breed. But, but with, you know, his fresh ears mm -hmm. on it, a different take. So we're real happy with how it came out. Everything mm -hmm. is very crisp, loud, to the front, you know. So the production's great. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's obviously the fans obviously responded well with, you know, since you guys released some, like, put it to the torch. Yeah. And, you know, 
that's a good fresh start, you know. You know, because that's what I noticed when I was, you know, looking everything up. And, you know, it's like saying, you know, you guys went with, you know, for 10 years, ironically enough, you know. And, you know, it, it makes sense to, you know, freshen up. But at the same time, it's good to keep, you know, keep it in the family sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, Zeus understands us. He knows what we're going for in the studio. We love working with him. Um, you know, it was just a kind of thing like, well, let's let's try a different formula now. Zeus and us, and we'll bring in somebody else and get their take on it. And what comes about is a great finished product. All right. Was there anything that you guys were listening to, like, in the studio to get inspired for this particular album? Um, I don't know. I'm sure we all listened to our own personal stuff. There wasn't anything specific we would turn on to get psyched up or anything like that, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I don't know. I just listened... When I'm prepping to go into the studio, I just listen to a lot of drummers, drum music, all different kinds of styles, but cool drum stuff. Such as? Uh, I like a lot of funk music. I think the funk drummers are the best drummers in the business, you know? They got playing strong backbeat, a lot of cool fills, ghost notes, just really uh, being musical on the drums. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm a big fan of that, and I try as much as I can to kind of translate that into hate breeds mm -hmm. music. It's kind of tough sometimes because it's just loud and crazy mm -hmm. and fast and just really aggressive. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like the little um, the bells and whistles that the guys do, and and just the feel and the finesse that goes into that style of drumming. Mm -hmm. So to get me in the headspace of recording, I like to listen to guys like that and really really feel what they were doing when they were laying their stuff down. You know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So. Was there any song in particular that almost didn't make the final track listing? Uh, yeah, we have one or two B-sides that didn't make the album at all. Uh, they haven't made it onto anything else yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you always keep a couple songs in the can for like international releases mm -hmm. or B-sides or soundtracks or whatever, mm -hmm. video games. <coughs> so there's one or two songs that may pop up in the near future or maybe they'll be on the next record we work on. So was there any song in particular that, you know, that took the longest to come together? and why um, so yeah i would say before the fight i think that was the first song we started writing and messing around with and uh you know we had the basic skeleton and then we kind of put it on the back burner and worked on some other songs and then we came back to it laid lyrics to it and then the lyrics uh they, they didn't really fit right with the song so we changed the lyrics out and i don't think the song was actually was from the first song we started demoing i don't think the song actually was complete until all the other tracks were already done on the record so <laughs> it was more just like getting frustrated with it shelving it coming back to it getting frustrated with it and just kept on and on but now it's one of my favorite tracks on the record there's this cool like push and pull between the tempos and, and uh, the choppiness of the fills and stuff right on. so uh, the, the album artwork how does that correlate you know with the songs and the album as a whole uh, well the artwork in itself we wanted to do something different um, you know, as uh, when uh, any band's doing a record, you want to do something different. Like I said, you want to keep it fresh. You want to try new things. Uh, that's what progresses you forward, you know. Mm -hmm. So we figured, all right, when it came down to album artwork, everything we've done in the past, uh, you know, the, the colors have been different. Everything's been kind of like a digital uh, collage of different images that come together, you know, maybe based around the hate breed skull or the maces or the eagle or something mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> and we kind of wanted to do something different altogether on this one. So we figured, uh, you know, why not go with, like, the tapestry mm -hmm. style of yeah. art, like actual hand-drawn art mm -hmm. instead of just some digital imagery. Yeah. So we had a guy uh, paint an actual painting that looked like some kind of tapestry, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went through maybe three edits before we uh, finalized the actual cover that it is now. But it was really close. There were just maybe one or two things about the picture that needed to be taken out or just adjusted. Um, but the colors are there too. We kind of stuck with the uh, the red, white, and black of mm -hmm. the Hatebreed logo, so that's kind of in there too. And uh, yeah, I mean, we were just going for something completely different than what we've done in the past. So, what does 2013 have in store for Hatebreed? Lots of touring. You know, that's mm -hmm. the name of Hatebreed's game. Yeah. Uh, we already have a uh, second leg of this tour lined up in the U.S. And then uh, in the summer, as we spoke about before, we'll go over to Europe and do a lot of the open air festivals throughout June. Uh, July and August mm -hmm. we're hoping to get over to Southeast Asia and South America at the end of the year mm -hmm. and then that'll roll us into 2014 and you know we'll hit some other uh, spots that we haven't been in a while or maybe some uncharted territory we mm -hmm. haven't been yet but or to the moon 
or to the moon. I mean, they're building stuff up there, so we got to play there soon, right? <laughs> Mars, all those places. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Well, thank you very much for taking hey, the time to join with me. Thanks a lot. Matt of Hatebreed, Richard, RichardThinks.org. The Divinity of Purpose is out now through Razor and Tie, and we'll see you later.